With Diddy's downfall, it looks like Naomi Campbell is next, and she's currently banned from a charity role after misusing some of their funds. Now, this isn't uncommon, but we don't typically see people get punished for it. We see foreign governments corrupt, popular celebrities, or certain brands like we just exposed Amazon on my podcast. Well, I have to tell you, I am not surprised. It looks like there was a whistleblower at this charity who said that Naomi Campbell is spending all the money. Again, a charity is someone that accepts money without like paying tax taxes and is supposed to be going to a good cause. It looks like she's been prohibited from serving as a charity trustee for the next five years. It looks like tens of thousands of dollars were spent on her hotel accommodations, spa treatments, personal security, cigarettes, and other expenses. It also looks like Naomi's fellow trustee, Bianca, received hundreds of thousands of dollars in unauthorized payments from the charity. And Bianca's actually been banned from serving for nine years. And again, another trustee, Veronica, was in on it as well. Naomi has long been linked to people like Epstein and really scary high profile figures. We've made videos about her before, but I'm, I feel a big downfall coming. The report also claimed the charity suffered from poor governance and inadequate financial management. From 2016 through 2022, less than 10%, about 8% of the funds were actually being used for charity. I just found out today about the findings and I'm extremely concerned and we are investigating on our side as I was not in control of my charity. I put the control in the hands of a legal lawyer. And so we are investigating to find out what and how, as I, everything I do and every penny I ever raise goes towards charities. Now this is disgusting. Someone go and grab Jojo Siwa because I don't understand why she has a bulge. Now I recognize we're in a time where we're bending gender norms and you know, it's all very fluid and I welcome that. But there's no way Jojo is trying to come out as like a, like a hermaphrodite or something. She's trying to get some clout. She's rocking a custom rhinestone corset complete with a built-in abs, nipples, and um, a blinged out bulge. Now, of course we are blurring this image because it is Kind of sick in my opinion, but I don't know. I just I just think it's a little bit weird to like, we don't have anything where like male genitalia is just like straight up. I mean, statues in Rome, but like, I don't know. I, I, I'm just trying to process that this is Jojo Siwa we're looking at. Jojo admitted that she is an attention whore, so she likes the clout. This person commented, Jojo, there's still time to delete this. And then another person commented, I don't know who's managing her career, but they are ruining her. Moving on to our next item. Again, this is The Sloan Show. If you guys have not tuned in, we have a few episodes so far. We're actually gonna be changing when this episode will be releasing, so check out the pinned comment for more details. But this is a series where we go through a bunch of different pop culture topics, so now let's get into Ellen. She says, call me mean, I don't care. She's proud of who she's become after the controversy, so it looks like she's accepting that she is a, a bitch and embracing it. You know what's wild? You could be walking down the street or headed to the grocery store and then bam, you're in an accident. Suddenly you're dealing with injuries, bills, and an insurance company that's doing everything in its power to give you the bare minimum. It's gotta feel so frustrating. Insurance companies always seem to pull the same tricks, offering you the lowest settlement possible. But here's where Morgan & Morgan steps in and changes the game. Morgan & Morgan isn't just another law firm. They are America's largest injury law firm with a thousand attorneys and offices in each state ready to fight for you. You don't have to deal with those insurance companies alone anymore because they've got your back. Take this for example. This year they got a client in Florida at $12 million, way more than what the insurance company was offering. Morgan & Morgan doesn't settle. They will continue to fight until you get what you deserve. And here's the kicker. The whole process is as easy as ordering takeout. You can submit everything from your phone. No need for paperwork marathons or endless appointments. And with Morgan & Morgan, you only pay if you win. So if you've been injured or you know somebody, Buddy, don't just sit there. You could head over to forthepeople.com slash Sloan, or you could check out the link in my description below. It's fast, it's easy, and it's free unless you win. Morgan & Morgan is the team that fights for you because they're for the people. Thank you for sponsoring this video and enjoy. Ellen is no longer worrying about what others think of her, revealing that she's come to love herself after being labeled mean in a toxic workplace scandal. Ellen said her career in comedy has made her acutely aware and care about what people think, but she's no longer letting it all get to her. She said, if they like you, you're in. If they don't, you're out. I've spent an entire lifetime trying to make people happy and I've cared too much what other people think of me. She added, after a lifetime of caring, I just can't anymore, so I don't. I think she really likes riding this kind of wave of victimhood, like wait until her wife files for divorce 
divorce against her. I wonder what kind of victim mentality she's gonna play up then. All right, well, let me catch up on what's been going on with me since you saw me last. Okay. I decided to take up gardening. I got chickens. Let me see what else I can tell you about that has been going on. Honestly, I don't... I, I, I get under, I understand why people loved Ellen, but I don't get the appeal. Like, I'm not rushing to go and see her. Oh, yeah. I got kicked out of show business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the be kind girl wasn't kind. That was the headline. Well, honestly, this whole, like, approach of her owning that she's not a nice person and that she's terrible and all of that it actually kind of works in her favor because at least she's not denying it like she once was here's the problem i'm a comedian who got a talk show and i ended the show every day by saying be kind to one another had i ended my show by saying F yourselves people would have been pleasantly surprised to find out i'm kind most women aren't okay so i can get the approach i don't know how long she could play up this but at least probably one last tour in her this person commented you got kicked out of show business for your rampant hypocrisy you preach be kind but then you abuse your staff typical rules for thee but not for me mentality another person commented ellen treats her staff and some of her guests like utter crap on her show netflix money for ellen yay I keep seeing these viral pictures of Demi Lovato like smiling like really hard, which I actually just watched the Smile movie last night, which was pretty scary. I actually want to see the second one, but Demi Lovato is actually opening up about her child stardom. But before we get into this, I do want to give a little rant that I feel like this documentary that Demi Lovato did was kind of a way for Disney to create their quiet on set, but to have control over it. So it seems like, oh yeah, Disney's been exposed through this expose, but it's not really much of an expose at all. The Heart Attack Singer discusses mental health, addiction, body image, and bullying. Nice. This documentary is so timely and so important. What inspired you to do it now? It's actually been a project that's been years in the making. And when I first had this idea, it was at the end of my last documentary. If I could have done it sooner, I would have. I actually remember when she started this documentary because I was in talks with some of the child stars, so I knew that they were participating in it. She goes on to share in this documentary that she was super bullied. The popular girl started writing in the bathroom stalls. Demi's a whore and all these nasty things. There was a petition going around saying that she should harm herself and unalive herself, which is sick. She said, while we're making Kid Rock, we we're all just thrown into this Disney machine. We called Disney High. You know, we were dating each other. There were people that didn't like each other. We're all the same age. Age. none of us were in high school so that was our experience which that is interesting because like and again it is like a high school perspective there's a lot less kids than there are in high school but they all talk about each other there's like the popularity with the big stars like Demi versus everyone else so I can see why she became a target she spoke with Raven Simone in the documentary and actually Raven talked about the moment she met Demi and Demi didn't even recall it because she was like using drugs and just really out of it. Let's react to some of the clips of Raven and Demi speaking together. You guest starred on my show, Sunny by the Champ. Yes, I did. I've completed my own investigation, and my own conclusion is that you are a wackadoodle do. I'm a wackadoodle who? Do. Oh, oh, oh. We first got on the phone to. That's kind of crazy to think that Demi did not remember that, especially because Raven is a big star in her own right. Talk about this project. You were like, I was like, I watched you on That's So Raven, such an inspiration. You were like, I was on your show. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, she was. Yeah. And I, but it was part of my dissociation that I don't even remember so much of my show that I was on. Yeah. But I do remember how difficult I was to work with because I. I do feel like that's more of an explanation, maybe not drugs, but this is dissociation because she doesn't want to remember those times and those moments. And it's probably just like a lot of like, stimulation to at a young age should be doing all this and still trying to figure out who you are. I was in so much pain and I was hurting. I mean, you weren't the nicest person. Right. You weren't like, welcome, you know, you weren't doing that. But being the type of person I am mm -hmm. and that I've been in the industry for as long as you and I understand the glaze over the eyes, mm. I didn't hold it against you. I just was yeah. like, something's going on there. 
Right now, Cardi B is a mess. I know you guys aren't surprised, but they are currently in a divorce battle and there are some new cheating accusations. Cardi B's divorce from Offset is getting uglier with fresh accusations of infidelity and fights over property and assets. The latest drama between the estranged hip hop couple unfolded Wednesday as Cardi hopped on Instagram Live to give Offset a piece of her mind and Offset was there. He wrote in one of the comments that Cardi had cheated on him with another man while she was pregnant, saying, you effed with a baby inside of you, tell the truth. Cardi's not shy, she went on to post on Twitter, and I did, with six explanation points confirming she had an affair. Offset's denying rumors that he had been cheating on Cardi, and it looks like she's not denying anything. Our friend King Asante made a video, so here's a little snapshot of him talking about that. And while this live was going on, he joined and commented saying, you effed with a baby inside tell the truth and after the live she tweeted and did in all caps and people think that this is her response to obviously what offset said on the live now i need you guys to see this instagram live for yourself so let's go ahead and react to this together that put hitting that you still calling my shit trying to get trying to get your lick back trying to do your big lick back i don't care you're lame and them bitches is lame too you want to know why because you got to them bitches in order to get your ego to feel high you know i'm too much i'm too i'm too i'm too much woman for you you know what i'm saying i'm too much of a boss bitch for you and i always been too good for you so you gotta the bitches to make yourself feel better because i don't make you feel i mean actually I, I i feel like she's probably telling the truth in a way like i'm you're that in this home so that's what you gotta do at another point in Instagram Live, Cardi blasted Offset for thinking he could apparently buy her off, but she said money and gifts are not enough. She also accused him of threatening to take her hard-earned property because she was moving on from him. But Cardi warned Offset that he would be in for a fight over her assets, which if it was me, I would be too. Like, you are not taking my stuff. That's why a prenup is so important, guys. If you are getting married, get a prenup. I mean, if, I feel like if you have like kind of like if you don't project like any massive earnings coming, you know, you never know, but it's just, just got to be safe. I find it so crazy, right? You know what I find so crazy? That a think that they could just buy a bitch. You know? why, why do I feel like she's spiraling in this house? You know what I'm saying? I love me shit, but you can buy, you can buy me no more, mother and, I, and it's so crazy that a think that that's enough. It's not enough, honey. It's just not enough. It's so funny too. I find. I was like, get it? Like, um, if she can afford everything on her own, she doesn't need him to buy any gifts for her. It's just it doesn't have the same impact after the fifth cheating scandal. It's funny that they think that they could f on anything, but when I, when I start talking to, <sighs> you want to threat me with taking shit the that mouth on I her. can work my ass off for. It does seem like she's kind of like in her demon mode. Like you could tell her eyes, the way she's speaking. She's like a little too happy saying all this. Cardi B filed for divorce in July, asking for primary custody of their kids. They've always had an up and down relationship. Cardi has filed for divorce before, but she's called it off. We did a full deep dive into their relationship if you want to go and check that out. But for our last topic, let's talk about Diddy. Suge Knight claims that Diddy is experiencing drug withdrawals while in jail, saying the industry got him on drugs. At this point, he is the industry. Suge Knight participated in a phone call with a journalist on News Nation in which he shared that Diddy's not doing well. Suge expressed his belief that Diddy's unlikely to snitch on others, citing the rapper's connections with powerful individuals. He also suggested that Diddy may be struggling in jail due to his drug use. Suge Knight, the founder of Death Row Records and one-time enemy of Sean Diddy Combs, talks about Combs' arrest by the feds in an interview with News Nation. Have you ever been to any puppy parties? No. You sure they had a long time to think about it, but if you haven't been in those butt naked parties, even some of the preachers been in those parties, and they went on their knees praying for God. Right now, it seems like everyone is trying to wipe their hands clean of Diddy. Even Costco put out a statement. Diddy's lawyer offered an explanation on why the feds found a large stock of baby oil. Mark said that Diddy, like most Americans, goes and purchases in bulk. So he probably got it at Costco. But the thing that Mark did not anticipate was that Costco was gonna put out a statement saying that they don't even carry this product. So don't wrap us into this. I can't imagine it's thousands. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not really sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. I don't know where the number a thousand came. One bottle of baby oil goes a long way. I don't know what you need, need a thousand for. He has a big house, he buys in bulk. You know, I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. 
I actually do wonder where did he get this baby oil? Like, did he purchase like 50 bottles at a time from Amazon? And he just like wanted to watch the stockpile grow. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Sloan Show. A bunch of hot topics, just like you guys like them. If you guys enjoyed this series, comment below. Again, we are going to be coming out on a new date. I think it might be Fridays. So every Friday morning, like Wednesday, you'll have, let's get into a podcast. Thursday, you'll have Blinded and Breakdown. Friday, you'll have The Sloan Show. And of course, all of your other good content. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys.